Hey guys, Ivan here and we are starting this video with a super freaky update of a very popular classic physique competitor Robert Timms who recently won the Texas Pro in a, let's say, very loud manner and also, some would say, controversial but only in a sense that his physique is not super classic, that he is a downsized bodybuilder with super small waist, super small joints and crazy conditioning, but not exactly super classic lines, unlike Logan, who, whose body, whose physique screams classic. I was one of the people to say that, but was the win controversial? Not at all, not even close, not even slightly, I think he absolutely nailed that show and deserved to win it, no doubt. Now he's back in the gym and he's surely utilizing the post-show rebound maximally. And you guys know, the thing with post-show rebound, if you take it easy, if you do the reverse dieting, if you add food slowly, your metabolism is insanely fast at that point, so you can ride that wave of insulin sensitivity and your body being at that hungry state, as they say, being like a sponge because it was uh, deprived of all the nutrients for a while and now it's, go it, it's gonna take everything and use it, utilize it maximally. So he cannot let himself uh, get fat or relax, go on a vacation after the show, because Mr. Olympia is coming soon. So he will definitely utilize this, this part between the show and Mr. Olympia maximally, and I'm sure he's gonna be much better than Mr. Olympia. I'm not really sure how much weight can he gain, but as you can see right here, I mean, these, these, these pumps after the show, those are the craziest pumps. And basically, if you guys competed before, you know that if you take it easy, you can ride that wave for like two months, eight weeks, maybe even more. And after that, let's say after three months, you start to get a little bit flatter. You don't really have those pumps anymore because you gain some fat and your insulin sensitivity goes down. But that's normal. It's part of the process. However... Robert is not gonna have time to get to that point because Mr. Olympia is uh, in about how many like seven weeks now So he can utilize those seven weeks probably he will probably eat more food uh, Until the Mr. Olympia than he ate coming into the Texas Pro because his metabolism is probably cranking up like crazy right now He can eat more and get even leaner and uh, I'm sure he can just maintain this conditioning and grow actually make progress and his coach is uh, AJ, a uh, cement factory guy, AJ Sims. And that guy is very knowledgeable. I listen to him. He knows his stuff. He definitely does. He made great progress with a lot of other competitors. So we can expect improvements. From this guy, do I have him actually challenging Chris Bumstead for the win? If the criteria was a little bit different, if the conditioning, uh, the deep cuts, the strations, the lines were everything... If the guys didn't really look for those beautiful, classic, golden era shaped physiques, yes, maybe he would even win the show. But I think in classic, they're definitely looking for the shape. Me personally, I don't think this guy is like golden era material. So I don't really have him beating Brian, Terence Ruffin. Uh, I don't know if, if, if Chan Kang, Branch Chan Kang, whatever that Asian guy's name is, I don't know if he's doing it. Uh, I don't know how well how well will he uh, compare against Cal Alex Cambronero, for example. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I do have him definitely in the top five. And now, can he be second? It's possible. I I'm not saying it's impossible, but maybe. Can he beat Chris? No way. Uh, yeah, I don't see that happening ever. But uh, beating Terence Ruffin and Brian and Brian Ainsley. Potentially, maybe, I still have to see them compared, but I think those guys' physiques flow much better and they're more classic, so I have this guy in top 5, probably not higher than like 4th place, that's just my opinion, whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Oh, and one more thing, Ian Valier, he thinks that Robert Timms is going to be better than Brion and Terence and everybody else, and that he's gonna be the runner-up. So far, Ian was always right with his classic physique predictions, so considering that, it's very bold to say that I have different opinion, because Ian knows his stuff about classic physique, but I still feel that way and I'm gonna stick with my opinion. I hope I will be right instead of Ian, but so far Ian was, was on point as far as his predictions, so 
it's all odds are against me honestly but i just feel that way and if you guys think i'm wrong tell me by the way we got a physique update of chris bumstead and honestly guys i don't really have much to say about it i mean it doesn't really look much different from last year he looks great the thing with chris is you know that he has that autoimmune system disease so he cannot really push too much in the off season when I say push, I mean push his body. When I say push his body, I mean pushing the gear. I don't mean training hard or eating right. I'm sure he's doing that. But uh, how much progress can a guy who is on TRT during the offseason actually make? He can, actually. Chris can. He is using, uh, at least he said it, he was using like, I don't know, 500 mix of, of tests, something like that. Maybe like one more compound at, at max and very low doses. And uh, yeah, like a lot of bodybuilders who abuse gear heavily would consider that TRT. So Chris is not doing a lot of stuff in the offseason and he gets a little bit chubbier in the offseason. He doesn't really maintain low body fat. Bodybuilders, open bodybuilders, they get chubby, but they get watery mainly. They don't really add fat. Most of them don't. Some of them, like Sean Roden, get a little bit fat, but that's rare. Usually all these bodybuilders who are super devoted, with crazy metabolisms, who are training super hard, eating a lot, they get they get just bloated, you know, watery, that's it. Chris, he gets a little bit fat, so you can't really see the progress in, when he's in his off-season. And when he starts dieting, there is that point where he's losing body fat and his glycogen stores are depleted. So you can't really see what he's gonna bring eventually. But once he loses all the fat and the skin gets tighter again, uh, when his muscles are filled up and they stretch the skin, it's usually not until one week out that you can actually see if Chris made some crazy progress. Last year it wasn't obvious until he steps on the stage. So I think this year we will not really be able to see if he made progress until he's on the stage. But do I think he did? Well, so far he made a lot of progress throughout the year, so I think he's going to be better this year than he was last year. And this photo in particular, I don't really have much to say about it. Again, he's getting conditioned, he's losing fat, he's getting better, um, he looks great, so not really much to analyze. He looks awesome, and I'm sure he's going to be ready until Mr. Olympia, and I, I have no doubts he's going to win at like 99.9099. While we are on the classic physique topic, do you guys remember this guy? His name is Matt Elgus and he was one of the originals, one of the original YouTubers, fitness YouTubers. I don't know how old you guys are, but if you are like me, I'm 25 right now, I'm sure you know who Matt Elgus is. You know him, uh, Chris the Beast Mode Jones, uh, Physics of Greatness, it was the channel back in the day. Uh, then we had Hodge Twins, then we had, of course, Louis Marco, Six Pack Shortcuts, and the other guys who basically started this fitness YouTube thing. Matt Togas was one of them. He was a competitor even back in the day, but I don't think he competed in Classic Physique uh, so far. And he did this time around, and he won his class. His conditioning was, I guess, okay, but not great, especially lower body. A lower back as well you can see not really crisp the waistline is definitely too wide not really much of a classic uh, classic shape lats too too small especially for this waistline he definitely does need more pop right there uh, the legs are there is no sweep they are sort of forming a triangle so not a good classic physique not a lot of potential to be a pro i don't think he turned pro he won NPC Tahoe show and he won uh, Classic Physique Class A and I think he also did bodybuilding division and uh, he, he won that too but I don't think this was a pro qualifier and I don't think he deserves to be a pro I mean I don't know there are probably other pros that look uh, worse sure it happens but uh, do I think this physique is pro card worthy I personally do not I don't think he should be a Classic Physique professional uh, and I don't see any potential of becoming a good pro, not even not even slightly, <laughs> no, no way. And yeah, he was a great YouTuber, it's good for him that he won and uh, he got in shape, great. If he truly wants the pro card and he enjoys competing, uh, I would say to him what I say to anybody, go for it, don't give up, ever. 
for sure try who knows what's gonna happen but if you ask me about my opinion is this a good pro physique uh, in classic is this very classic physique i have to say no all right let's transition into bodybuilding but slowly uh, i'm not gonna start with the most crazy physique updates we have one of the maybe third or, or or second best bodybuilder in the history you know achievement wise but not exactly the best physique in the world right now i mean this is dexter jackson and he is retired now what is his body looking when he's retired it looks absolutely amazing not just his physique his face if he didn't have this this gray beard would you tell that he was turning 52 this year? <laughs> no, no, I'm sure your, your estimate would be like, I don't know, 37, 38, well, let's say 40, four, something like that. He definitely doesn't look 52. And his physique, downsized, sure, but he's getting in a good shape and he still has really good dominant arms. You know, with age, limbs are the first thing that goes, but it's not really the case with Dexter. He still has pretty big arms, and his waistline seems small. Maybe, probably, he's eating much less, and that's why his stomach shrinked, and uh, he didn't maintain a lot of muscle. Again, he's a genetic freak. Even though he's 52, his body is not giving up yet. It still wants to progress. He can do with it what he wants still. I mean, it's not really telling him what it wants to do he can he can still control it if he if he tries hard for sure so a lot of people i don't know if you guys were serious or not but a lot of people commented in my video that i made about him about his physique update that he should that he can do classic and do well come on guys are you serious about that i don't know i don't know if you're joking or not but no uh, he, his his physique is definitely not meant for classic maybe it once was when he was like 20 but after that he gained so much muscle that if he downsized, uh, it will just look uh, weird, especially now at this age where he his, some of his body parts sort of melted away. It doesn't really look super symmetrical, it doesn't look aesthetic. Uh, again, I'm not sure if any of you guys were serious, but can he really do well in classic physique? No. I mean, I'm guessing he would do better than Flex Wheeler. Flex was super classic looking back in the day, especially when he was like uh, starting his bodybuilding career. When he was in Mr. Olympia 1993, that physique, it, it was very close to his classic physique limit. And that would have probably been the Mr. Olympia winning material in classic physique today. But uh, then, like, after 15 years of not competing, Flex didn't look that well. Daxter competed last year. So he would definitely do better than Flex. But can he really be a top classic physique guy? No, I don't see that happening. Uh, they would definitely let him do the Mr. Olympia in classic physique if he wanted to, but uh, yeah, no way he's gonna consider that. Would I love that to happen? Hell yeah, it would be entertaining as hell, but would I like to see him downsized on stage and, you know, uh, remember that for the rest of my life as, as Dexter? I don't think that would be a good Dexter and I wouldn't want to remember that. It would be a bad thing for him to do. And now he does look great he does look very aesthetic right now retired he looks uh, he looks uh, younger maybe i think he looks younger now than he looked like last year or year before and he looks very healthy i hope he actually is but his face looks very healthy and his body looks amazing he's in great shape and i love seeing this i'm happy for dexter what do you guys think should he do classic uh, how well would he do in classic uh, i know a lot of you talk about that in that previous video in the comment section but Tell me again, what do you think? I mean, you guys know my take, so give me yours. All right, and now we are getting to big boys. Brandon Curry with a physique update, training his arms, looking absolutely ridiculous. He's already in a good shape. I don't think he needs to get much, much, much leaner than this. I don't know where his glutes are at right now and his lower back and stuff like that, hamstrings, are they detailed enough? Probably not, there is still time to get to that point, but uh, overall, from the front and like his arms and shoulders, they are showing enough separation. The skin looks thin enough to me, if you ask me, this is pretty much it. Now, last year, as I said before, he was playing the conditioning game because he thought he's gonna be challenging Phil Heath, and he made a wrong decision i mean he didn't expect big rammy to come and dwarf everybody else so this year he'll definitely go with the fullness 
I mean, it would be the logical thing to do. If he came bigger and uh, more conditioned than Big Ramy, which is not hard to do, he can come fuller and bigger than last year and still to be more conditioned than Big Ramy, that can be a package that is very dangerous. And if Big Ramy doesn't bring his absolute best, it can be the package that wins, that beats Big Ramy. It's gonna be exciting, Mr. Olympia, because we don't really know who's gonna win it. It's not obvious at all. And I love that. When I started following bodybuilding, it was around 2010 and 11. Phil just won and he was the champ for the next seven years. So the first seven years I was following bodybuilding, the champ was always the same. Phil Heath would win every single Mr. Olympia. And every year everybody was saying, okay, Phil is gonna win, Phil is gonna win. Maybe Kai, but no, Phil is better. And it was always the same. There was no anticipation. There was no real challenge to Phil Heath, and it was boring. It became dull. I'm sure the same thing was back when Ronnie was competing, or Lee Haney. So now, we don't know. We don't know. We, first we had Sean, then we had Brandon and Big Ramy. This year, can it be Hadi? Can it be, I don't know, Brandon again? Maybe Big Ramy two times? Maybe William Bonek beats all of these guys somehow? Maybe Akeem Williams, maybe Ian Valier, maybe, I don't know, Nick Walker. Anything is possible this year. The cards are open, anything is possible. And I love that. Do I think Brandon Curry, looking like this, has a chance to win the Mr. Olympia? It's hard beating Big Ramy with legs like Brandon's. I think he improved his legs, but it will be a weakness compared to Big Ramy. It's gonna be hard to give a victory to somebody who has small legs who at least looks like he has small legs standing next to the Mr. Olympia champ. So now, since Big Ramy is the winner, Brandon needs to knock him out. Can Brandon do that? I don't know if he can actually knock him out, but let's say Big Ramy is not that firm in that first position. He just won. So can Brandon be better than Big Ramy? I think he can. I think he can, and the chances are actually in his, in his favor. Because Big Ramy is definitely not known for consistency. Maybe it's gonna be different this year, since he has a coach who actually got him to the Mr. Olympia win. So now maybe Chad Nichols will actually repeat the same thing. I don't know, but we're still not sure. Big Ramy didn't prove as a consistent bodybuilder. Brandon Curry, however, definitely has proved that. And um, again, it's gonna be a good battle, it's gonna be a tough Mr. Olympia. Anybody like in top five can win, it can go five ways, but Brandon Curry, as for now, looks absolutely amazing and he does look like somebody who can win the Mr. Olympia again. Will Regan Grimes make a statement at this year's Mr. Olympia? He's 300 pounds, guys, right now. Does he look like he's heavier than Brandon, who is 275? No, he looks smaller, but Regan is taller. And also, yeah, he's 300 pounds, but... Do I really see some crazy change in his physique? I don't think I do. Maybe it's because he got a little bit flatter, uh, fatter and then therefore flatter, like, like Chris does, so we can't really see the progress until he's completely shredded. But I don't know, a lot of people are saying that they follow their channel and that he was talking about that he actually made progress. Me personally, based on his physique updates that I saw so far, he looks pretty much the same to me. Now, the thing with Regan is not really the size, it's about muscle maturity, mainly. Yeah, some size as well, but maturity is the problem of Regan. Did he improve too much? Did he gain so much muscle in this past off-season? He had a long off-season, but I don't really see some crazy changes. I don't think his physique changed too much. However, he has enough time to prove me wrong when he gets shredded, and when he, you know, starts using the pre-contest gear, that is definitely way more toxic and um, definitely does a lot more work, he's gonna look much more impressive. So let's see what's gonna happen until the Mr. Olympia. Maybe he's gonna make a, a leap as far as placings, but maybe not. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? I'm just saying I don't really see that he made a ton of progress. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. All the best and bye-bye.